right, welcome to church this morning. Uh, I missed you the last two weeks. We was uh, over across the river. I don't know where in the world you would, but uh, <laughs> we're here this morning, and we just believe that God's going to bless us in a special way. I uh, appreciate uh, Sarah doing that uh, uh, rendition on the Advent. Uh, when I saw that she wrote about that, I did a little research on it. And I learned some stuff about the Advent that I didn't have a clue yeah. what was going on. So this morning, we're going to carry that a little bit further because uh, it not only uh, is talking about the birth of Christ and the hope and the peace that he brought into the world when he came, but it's talking about the second coming. And I thought that was really interesting that we're looking forward to the second coming and in 2020, uh, we've had a lot of bad stuff going on. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of uh, policy things happen, but uh, uh, I've been looking for the Lord to come, and I think he's gonna have to come because I think he's the only one that can straighten this mess out that we've got. They, they're saying now that it's probably gonna be January the 6th or 7th before we even know who the president is. So. Whatever, I tell you, in my 80 plus years, this is the most confused mess I've ever been in, but God is still on the throne, Amen. and we're looking forward to his soon return, and I think it'd be a good time, uh, the song says, say the song says, what a beautiful day for the Lord to come again, and I think that's what we really need to be uh, concentrating on, I think we ought to be uh, uh, meditating upon him and I spent a lot of time out in my backyard uh, just praising the Lord for allowing me to be a part of uh, his wonderful work and the way that he works with man and the things that he showed me and how he has blessed me and today in America we just went through the Thanksgiving holiday and we've got so much to be thankful for <clears throat> even with all the problems and that's going on, this is still the greatest nation on the face of this earth. And what a blessing it is to say that I'm an American. And I hope we can say that for years to come, but it's, uh, <clears throat> there's some stuff that needs to be worked out. And it looks like to me, <clears throat> the Lord's the only one can work it out. So if you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 24, because since we're talking about Advent, I'm going to just take up there and I'm going to talk about the, uh, the rapture. And that's when the Lord's going to come and call the church out to meet him in the air. And that word rapture is not in your Bible. But it's a catching away when he calls the saints out to meet him in the air. And I'm going to talk about the rapture and the return of Jesus. And what a day. He came, he came as a baby. But this time he's going to come back and claim his own and then he's going to come back uh, seven years later with all the saints and he's going to come back as king of kings and lord of lords what a day that's going to be and so in matthew chapter 24 we read these words in verse number 35 the rapture and the return of jesus he says here in matthew chapter 24 verse number 35 heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But that the day and hour know no man, know not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. The disciples that came to him and asked him, said, when are you coming back? When, when, is, when is this going to happen? And he began to explain in Matthew chapter 24 and chapter 25, he began to explain some things that they need to know. And one of the things is that nobody knows when this is going to take place. And he says in verse 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the come of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah there were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, and so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall 
uh, two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Watch. You don't know. And so therefore, some very interesting things and very exciting things are going to take place. And the best I can tell, I've studied the Bible pretty carefully, and the best I can tell, it could happen at any moment. I'm, I'm looking for the Lord to come at any time. But you know something? Uh, Jesus said he would come back, and then they were going to know when it was going to happen. And then uh, 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 Paul thought he would come in at any moment. And I, maybe the people, when they went out and watched him ascend into heaven, they might have thought he was coming back right away. Because uh, the angel appeared to him and said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing into heaven? This same Jesus. He said, What the angel was saying, go on about your business. He's coming back. But so uh, we're looking for that. And so today, as we think about that, we're going to think about Jesus will come again. And that's one thing that we can be sure of, even though there's so much uncertainty and so much turmoil in this world, we can be sure of one thing. Jesus said, I will come again. Here's what he said in John chapter 14, verse 2. He said, I will come again. In John chapter 14, verse number 2, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. The fact this morning is that Jesus is coming again. And friend, that's one thing we can get excited about. We can even earn a re reward because uh, we're looking forward to it, because we're loving His appearing. And so we can earn a re reward for that. And we all want some rewards. Uh, I've got some old uh, uh, farm equipment. And we used to have a tractor club. We used to be in a tractor club. They still got it. I'm not in it anymore. But we would <coughs> go and we'd have a show. Or we'd be in a Christmas parade. Or, or something like that. And it was always fun to win a, a, a trophy. One year with my old uh, 1936 uh, uh, John Deere and Pardon me, Bill. <laughs> I won. I won first place in a Newburn Christmas parade, and somebody said, "Yep, I bet you were the only tractor in there." I said, "Try 42." And so it, it, it's something to be rewarded, and the Lord is going to reward us for the things we've done after we're saved. Now, heaven is it, that's a free gift, but if you're going to get any rewards, you got to work for them. You got to earn them. And so uh, we need, need to be uh, doing what God wants us to do. Jesus will come again. The angels said he was coming. While he was ascending back into heaven, he said, Why stand and gave this same Jesus is going to come again in like manner as you've seen him go? So we, this morning, we need to tell people in Carrollsville, Dyersburg, Tennessee, Missouri, Arkansas, wherever, we need to tell people that he is coming again. And uh, Amanda said this uh, uh, disease is so bad that uh, uh, maybe some folks will get saved. Because let me tell you, sometimes that's, that's about all you can depend on is the Lord. I mean, because He can take over and He can uh, bring comfort and peace and healing when the doctor has says we've done all we can do. we still got God to talk about. I was thinking about today. You know, we've still got some, some good things going on. Even though as bad as things are, we've still got some really good things going on. We've still got the, the, the promise of His coming. That's to look forward to. We've still got prayer that we can talk to God no matter where we are. We've still got salvation. I mean, that's the greatest gift that there ever was. And we can still get it. And we've still got His Word, the most comforting book that was ever written. That's a different sermon, but I just go ahead and give you the outline uh, this morning. And so he's still coming. He's coming again. Jesus, the fact is, Jesus is coming, and praise God for that. Because I think he's the only one that can straighten this mess out. 
We've got it in a pretty big mess, it looks like to me. And so he says that nobody is going to know when it's going to happen. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, uh, we read that a while ago, and he said in, in verse number 37 of Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said, nobody knows. The disciples came and said, when is these things going to happen? And then he goes on in verse 37, and he says in verse 36, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. God is the only one that knows when he's coming back. And so, friend, it's been almost 2,000 years since he ascended back into heaven. It's been over 2,000 years since he came into the world as a little baby. As a matter of fact, he came in, uh, in 4 or 5 B.C. They came not nail it down because uh, the, in the B.C., the way they counted it, they counted down. Uh, uh, B.C. 10, B.C. 9, B.C. 8, they counted down. And they counted down to 1 B.C. But there is no such thing as a 0 B.C. So it went from 1 B.C. to 1 A.D. So... I don't know how that all works out. I, I'm not smart enough for that. My third grade education won't, won't let me figure that all in. But anyway, uh, he's been gone. He come back over 2,000 years ago. Oh, about 2,025 years ago is when he came. We're going to be talking about a lot of that in the month of December when we think about the Christmas. As a matter of fact, if the Lord continues and lets me, I'm going to put these songs together that we sang around Christmas time, and I'm going to ask the question, how can anybody hear these Christmas carols and not get saved? Man, listen, listen to those Christmas carols. They talk about the virgin birth. They talk, man, they talk. Well, anyway, that's next Sunday's sermon, so you've already got a preview, and if you don't want to come, I'll understand. But if you do want to come, we're going to have a good time in the Lord. At least I am. And I hope that you'll join in. Because, friend, that's what it's all about. Getting excited about what God is doing. Getting excited about what God has uh, told us. Getting excited. And we need to really talk about His coming. And I realize I may have talked uh, too much about it. But with all, all the turmoil going on, I try to talk about something that was exciting. And, friend, I'm excited about his uh, coming back. One of these days, the world's going to be rocking along. We're going to be driving our old vehicle down the road, and, and God's going to tell Jesus it's time to come back. He's going to step out on the clouds, and he's going to blow the trumpet, and uh, then we that are saved are going to be caught up to meet him in the air, and we're going to spend a seven year, we're going to get to uh, go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, we're going to spend a seven year honeymoon in heaven, and then we're going to come back to earth for a thousand years and spend a thousand year honeymoon on earth with Jesus being King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What a day. Man, I tell you what, that's something to get excited. Nobody knows when he's going. As a matter of fact, the world back then had said he's not coming. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 3, the world has said he's not coming. Now the world... May I be saying that with their mouth now, but you know their actions, even the churches, with their actions, they're acting like he's not coming. And here's what they said in Second Peter chapter three, verse number three. He said, "He said, know this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. A scoffer is one that said, oh, nothing, nothing, do that." And a scoffer and a lad walking after their own lust. And that's exactly what this, uh, this time is. It's what, what I like. And if you don't like it, you're wrong. I mean, today we're living in the most selfish time that I believe I have ever encountered. And so the people are, are, are keyed up on what I want. And if it no match what I want, then it's no good. And so he says, Crawford walking up there on us and saying, here's what they were saying, where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. 
Where is the promise of his coming? They said, well, man, he's not coming. They said, the sun came up yesterday, the sun came up last week, the sun came up last year. I mean, he's not coming. But then he goes on to say that, uh, that he, he hadn't come because he's not slack concerning his promise. That's a promise. He's not slack concerning his promise, but he is long-suffering. Not willing that any should perish. You see, the reason he didn't come yesterday is somebody else needs to get saved. He is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. And so if anybody asks you, well, he's not coming, why, is it, why didn't he come? Why didn't he come? Well, he didn't come because he's given you, or anybody lost, another opportunity, another day, another opportunity to ask him to be their Savior and Lord. And so he, nobody knows when it, that's going to be. He said nobody does. And so uh, he says, uh, even in Revelation, Jesus, uh, book of Revelations, the last chapter, Revelation 22, Jesus said, surely I come quickly. And John said exactly what you and I <coughs> should say today, even so come, Lord Jesus. Even so come, let, 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 let's, let's get it on. And so uh, down through the ages, people have been looking for him to come. Nobody knows when he's coming, but he said, I will come again, and you can take that to the bank. You can deposit it because he is coming in, and what a day that's going to be. And then he will come. It tells a little bit about how he's going to come. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 1 and 2, verse Thessalonians chapter 4 is where he talks about how, it's going, how the rapture is going to take place, and you need to read and study that. And for the sake of time, I don't have time to give you a full... Uh, a rendition of what goes on during that time, but you need to read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, and that tells what's going to happen at any moment. And then he goes on down, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 says, But of the times and seasons, brother, you have no need that I write unto you. But also, you don't, you don't need me to write and tell you all about that. And then he said in verse 2, For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, that's what we're talking about, the second coming, the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And so he goes on to explain how that takes place. If you know somebody's going to break into your house tonight, you'll put a, an extra padlock on, or you'll lose something, or you may even sit up and watch. I heard about a guy one time that uh, uh, some people have stolen, uh, come in and stole his computer stuff, and the next night he slept in the living room with a shotgun laid over his, uh, over his lap. So I don't know what all we might do. If we knew that a thief might come, uh, then friend, we might be prepared. But Jesus is going to come as a thief, and he's not going to announce that he's coming. He's coming as a thief in the night, and it could happen. My uh, observation is, and my uh, deal that I need to tell you is, that he could come at any moment, and he, it, we just need uh, to, to be ready. He says that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. He says that we need to be ready for his return. Not only ready for it, we need to be looking for it. We need to be loving his return. And friend, I don't know, uh, your, your new pastor is uh, going to be on the scene the 13th of uh, December. And so uh, until that time, I'll be with you one more Sunday. Until that time, and I'm, I'm trying not to say anything that might uh, uh, contradict or, or be contrary to what he might want to teach or what he, he might... Uh, I believe, but if, if he does, realize that uh, everybody's got an opinion. And Baptists need to be like an elbow. Your opinion needs to be like an elbow. It needs to be a little flexible. And so uh, when he teaches, he's going to teach you the thing that he sees, and I hope it agrees with what I'm saying. But if it don't, that don't mean both of us are wrong. That just means both of us 
see it in a different manner. So I hope you will get behind him. And if you if he says something that you don't agree with, go to him. As an adult, go to him and say, oh, what, what do you mean by that? And if I say something that you don't agree with, uh, come to me and say, Don, how, how did you come up with that idea? And I, I don't know. I've been down through these roads a long way. I've got a lot of dust on my on my shoes, and I've got a lot of a lot of things from places I've been. Uh, I was telling Ben something the other day, and he said, "Well, he never had heard that before." And well, that's something to be able to tell Ben something he never heard before. I said, "I have an idea with where he and I've been. We could share a lot of stuff with one another." And so we don't need to go into some of those places that, that I've been for sure. And I don't know about him. He, he might have been, he might have kind of dodged some of those mud holes, but I've been in mud holes that shouldn't nobody have ever been in. So he's going to come as a thief in the night. And so he says in Matthew chapter 24, here's what he says about that. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord does come. That's what we're talking about. The second coming. Now, the second coming is going to be in two stages. Stage number one is when he don't come back to the earth, he just comes in the clouds and he calls the saved out to meet him in the air. That's, that's the first stage of the second coming. Then, the, all the saved are going to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I don't know what else is going to take place. Some, some good stuff's going to happen. Rewards will be passed out and all that, all that stuff is, is going to take place for seven years. Then, at the end of that seven years, while that's going on in heaven, while we're having a good time, enjoying ourselves, the world is going to be going through the great tribulation. You talk about hell on earth, that's exactly what's going to happen. And then, at the end of that seven year, or approximately the end of that seven year, he's going to come back. And that's going to be the, the second part of the second coming. When he comes back, and all of us are going to come with him, he's going to set up his uh, earthly kingdom, and he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years on this old earth. And so uh, we, we'll be with him. And so he's going to come again. He said, be ready, for you don't know when the hour of the Lord may come. He said, verse 33, but know this, 43 of Matthew 24 said, 43 said, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known and watched, watched the thief would have come, he would have watched and would not have suffered or allowed his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. What is the message of the church? The message of the church is be ye ready because he said he could come at any moment, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man coming. And that's what people have said. He's not coming. And so uh, we're living in a day and age when I think it could happen, and I'm praying that it happens at any moment. And so if you've got any lost loved ones, they better get saved. If you know of anybody that needs to get saved, they better get saved because he could come at any moment, and people that have heard the gospel are going to be in for a, 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 a hard way to go because they're going to have to go through the Great Tribulation, and whether or not they can get saved during that time, uh, it's uh, it's some problematic deal going on because whether or not they can get saved, I don't know, because the Holy Spirit, you see, the only way you can get saved today is for the Holy Spirit to to get, bring you to conviction. It's for the Holy Spirit to deal with you. That's the only way. I mean, I can talk, and you can talk, and everybody can talk, and you can hear songs sung, you can do this, but if the Holy Spirit is not drawing you, you can't even get saved today. And so the Holy Spirit is going to take the church out to meet Him in the air, and the Holy Spirit is not going to be working with men and convicting them that they need to get saved. And so whether or not anybody's going to say it, I think a bunch of Jews are going to get saved because God's going to turn his attention back to the Jews. I think a bunch of them are going to get saved. But now whether anybody, uh, us Gentiles, this is the day and age of the Gentiles. And you can be saved today, but don't wait 
to for a better day because he said now is the day today is the day of salvation now is the accepted time and so he will come again as a thief in the night and then he will come for the saved in John chapter 14 verse 3 Jesus said talking there in John chapter 14 verse 3 he said and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also for today he will come uh, for the same and we'll go back and, and to first Thessalonians chapter 4 and we're going to talk about how he's going to come and call the saved out to meet him in the air. I like to talk about that and I do talk about it a whole lot and I like to think about it a whole lot. In first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 he says that the second coming, the first part of the second coming is here where he says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now I tell people Baptists are going to go first. And they said, how do you know? I said, I know because it says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And I said, when he shouts it's going to scare us all to death. And he says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And so I, I like to have a little fun with that. I, I don't don't take me to task for that, but I like to have a little ton fun. I like to look at things. And he said the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then he goes on to say, then verse 17, then which we are alive and remain. That's us. That's anybody that's still alive and here shall be caught up. That's the rapture. Caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so he will come for the same. My friend, lost are going to be left to go through the tribulation. The great tribulation. Lost are going to be left behind while the saved are going out to meet in the air. The Holy Spirit is going to do that. He's, going, he's, going, he's the one that quickened me. He's the one that convicted me that I need to get saved. He's the one that works for us and through us and, and helps us understand God's word. And he's going to take us out to meet him in the air. And so he will come for the same. And then he's going to come uh, to reward. I've already talked about that a little bit. But in Revelation chapter 3 verse 21, he is going to come to reward. And friend, that's of course we're going to be rewarded. Heaven would be good enough for me if I didn't get any reward. But since I can go to heaven, since I can have some rewards by being there, then uh, I just might as well try to earn a few rewards and uh, see what happened because of that. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 21, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. And so there day he's going to come and he is going to reward those that have been faithful to him. I just pray to God for you faithful people. We still got a few people in our churches that are faithful. And when I come to help a church, I just pray to God for you folks like Earl and the you folks that have been uh, here at Pillars of the Church and and you folks have been around, you're faithful, and, and I just, uh, uh, it's just such a joy to know that there's some faithful folks going to be there. And he's going to reward us for being faithful. He's going to re reward us for being concerned about our lost neighbors. He's going to reward us for, for praying uh, for those sick. He's going to reward us for everything. That, he's going to reward us for things that he's coming back to reward. In 2 Corinthians he talks about that a little bit more. And he talks who can earn a reward. Now as I said before, heaven is free. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid the price. You can go to heaven. There's a free ticket to heaven. You can go to heaven by simply admitting you're a sinner, believing that Jesus died for your sin, and saying, Lord, save me. 
but now for rewards, you've got to do something to earn that. And so uh, we need to know about that. Here's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now this is saved people. We're not going to stand and be judged to see if we're going to heaven because we'll already be there. But here's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. There's two judgments. Saved people are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Not to see if they go to heaven or not, but for the rewards. And so the lost people are going to stand in uh, Revelation chapter 20, 19 and 20. The lost people are going to stand before the great white throne judgment. That's where lost people are going to stand. And the saved people are going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Here's what we're going to be judged for. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in the body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. We're going to be stand, we're going to be stood for reward. We're not going to be judged to see if we're going to heaven. We're going to be judged <coughs> if, if, if I come to church today because I want to worship him, then I'll have a reward. If I give uh, what he's given me, if I give back to him what he's given me because he give me an opportunity, then we'll have a reward. If we do what we do for the Lord because we love Him, there will be a reward. But if we do it to be seen, then you have your reward and there will not be a reward. One time a, a woman uh, brought some flowers and they, she put them on a the piano. And uh, people, the pastor got up and he, he thanked her. He said, man, he called her by the name of he thanked her for, for bringing those flowers. Another lady said back there and said, well, I've got flowers just like that in my garden. And so she went home, she fixed a bouquet of flowers just exactly like it, and she brought it and set it in the church. And the next day, uh, the pastor, the next time, the pastor didn't say a word about her flowers. He bragged on this other lady's flower, but he never said a word about that. So she approached him and she said, hey, pastor, Said, said you was uh, bragging on this lady and complimenting her for bringing flowers and said I brought that bouquet and it's just like it and said you never said a word about mine he said lady said, I didn't notice that you brought those flowers but if you had brought them because you love the Lord he noticed and he would reward you because you brought them for him and so sometimes we, we have a reward because all we're doing is wanting somebody else to congratulate us. And we all like for people to congratulate us. I congratulate my wife on, on the cookies and, and pies and stuff she makes because if you congratulate them, they like to make another. And so there's reward in congratulating. And people like to be congratulated on, on what they do. And so uh, he's going to reward us. We must all appear. And so he's going to do that. And so we just need to know that we can earn rewards. Salvation is free. But rewards have to be earned. So Sarah put over there about the advent. And I said, well, wait a minute. I got my smartphone out. And I looked up the advent. I said, hey, look at that. That not only is leading up to the birth of Christ as we do around Christmas time but it's also talking about the second coming and how that the church should be looking forward to the second coming and that's a message that we need to have to our neighbors anybody we come in contact be ready because he could come as far as I can tell he could come at any moment let's pray <clears throat> Lord, we thank you today for this precious scripture. We thank you, Lord, for the promise of your coming. We thank you, Lord, for the hope that we can have looking forward to that. We thank you, Lord, for soul salvation that you provided to anyone, Lord, that needs it, that will realize that they're a sinner and realize, Jesus, that you were the Son of God and you died for our sins and trust you for their Savior. Anybody can be saved. We thank you, Lord, so much for that. 
Now, Lord, we bless, ask you to bless this invitation time. Should there be those here this morning that need to make a decision? We thank you, Lord, that they can make that decision wherever they are. And we ask you, Lord, to receive them and, Lord, grant the, their wishes. Lord, for those that are in bravery with the passion of love, one, we pray, Lord, that you might comfort them as only you can. Lord, for those that need a salvation, we pray, Lord, that they'll ask you for salvation and that you will grant it. Lord, those that's in, uh, in sick because of all the sickness that's going on, we pray, Lord, that you might be the great physician and that you might heal them, Lord. We pray, Lord, for 100% healing. But God, we know, Lord, that you've got a perfect will for everybody. We pray, Lord, for healing according to your precious will. I ask you, God, again, to bless in a special way and bless this church and bless us. A new pastor is coming on the scene. We pray, Lord, that he'll have a fruitful ministry and that this church will be seen many souls saved and many souls become excited over your precious word and the ministry that you've left for the church to do. Ask you, God, to bless, and we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen.